So Thursday, August 4th, there's a movie coming out called Bullet Train. It stars Brad Pitt. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. It looks like a fun movie. Looks like a fun time. Just by the trailers that I've watched from it, I've liked what I've seen. It looks like it's just a a fun action ride. Kind of like Top Gun. That's why I like Top Gun. There were no politics in it. It was just a good time. And audiences rewarded that movie with a lot of money. Now, I don't know how this movie is going to turn out. It's at a 75. Some critics are hitting it with low scores. But it's not because of the fact that it's got major issues or something. Some reviewers are giving it a lower score because there's not enough Japanese actors in it. Because the movie takes place in Japan and the book... The book was written by a Japanese man. So apparently, this is a major problem. A huge problem. Even though the writer of the book approves of everything. So here's what the Hollywood Reporter has to say as a part of their review. Unlike the book, in which all of the assassins who find themselves at cross-purposes on the Tokyo to Kyoto bullet train are Japanese, most of the principal characters have had an international makeover, raising online objections to whitewashing. Core members of the creative team, including the novelist, have defended the casting choices, maintaining that realism is not a big factor in the setting of characters. But it's perhaps significant that only when the dependable, compelling Hirokio Sanada steps up to play a key part in the climactic action. Does anyone on screen acquire a semblance of death? Depth. So, there you go. So, because of these changes, despite being defended by core members of the creative team, including the novelist, uh, this movie is... Let's just put it how they want to say it. Racist. That's what it is. So they bought the movie to pretty much turn it into a Hollywood movie is what they're doing here. Uh, and the movie looks fun. And there are a lot of Japanese people in the movie. If you watch the trailer, uh, you've seen that. But none of this matters Uh, What matters is that uh, Brad Pitt isn't Japanese. If he was, if he wasn't the, if he wasn't in this movie and it was like a Japanese guy is the main character, uh, this criticism wouldn't exist. I don't really see the issue. The reason that Brad Pitt's starring in the movie is because he's a huge star and will make people that probably wouldn't have watched this movie before maybe think about going to see it because. They might not want to watch a a Japanese action movie. I don't know. They have their reasons. I haven't watched them defend this. I didn't even know this was an issue until today when I ran across the reviews because I was curious to what people were saying about the movie because I think the movie looks like a lot of fun. I mean, bullet trains are a big deal over in Japan. It seems like that's the natural place to make this movie And they're trying to somewhat stay true to the books. How true this stays to the books, I don't even know. It could be the books in name only. But I find it funny they say that there's online objections that have been raised. And I find that funny because that just means people in the West are bitching about it. Nobody in Japan, I guarantee you, maybe a few of them, just to be safe. But I guarantee you the majority of the objections come from Western, entitled, narcissistic Americans on Twitter. Those are the people that are getting upset about it. I guarantee you. So they're quite pissed, quite upset that this movie uh, stars Brad Pitt. And because of that, they have knocked their score down and hurt the movie's review number on Rotten Tomatoes, which we know from experience doesn't hurt a movie too much, but it does 
it does somewhat matter because it, it does look, I mean, it's, it's better for a movie if they can slap that fresh on there. It just looks better, especially to normies. But it won't stop this movie from making any money. It'll be hilarious because from what it looks like, this movie just looks like a fun movie. I bet you the audience score is really high. We'll find out on Friday. But won't, wouldn't that be funny if yet another movie gets a low score from critics, high score from audiences? Because I always find that hilarious. But check this out. Here's how big of a deal this is. The Independent puts this out. The paywalled it, by the way. There's a big problem with the Brad Pitt movie Bullet Train. Don't tell me Japanese properties won't sell to international audiences unless they are first internationalized. So he uses Squid Games as an argument. And it's a good show, by the way. Squid Games was made in, I think, Korea. South Korean made, I believe. Great show. Great show. A bullet train was made in Hollywood. <laughs> so, I mean, what are they they're supposed to license it out to a Japanese studio? No, they made it in Hollywood. They used Hollywood actors. That's the main reason why it probably looks how it looks. I would have no problem if this if this movie had been made in Japan and brought over. It'd probably be better than what they made in Hollywood. But they made the movie in Hollywood. It's not that they're trying to sell it to international audiences. They went with the resources available to them and got as many good actors in Hollywood as they could. I don't know if Japanese actors tried out for it or not. I'm not sure. But they went with the casting decisions that they went with. I don't understand the problem here because that would mean they went with the best choices available. And Brad Pitt's a pretty big get. But, of course, this is racist. In fact, they even use this word again. I'm not going to mention cultural appropriation here because I fear that term is overused. It is overused because journalists like you think that Ghost of Tsushima, a game developed by Western Studios, is cultural appropriation because it wasn't made in Japan. A love letter to old samurai movies, but it's uh it's cultural appropriation and racist even though the japanese people loved it people of japan loved that game just talked about that in a video the other day but there's always something to bitch about these people drive me crazy they really do this movie looks pretty good this guy acts like he's re he's read the book too ah bullet train i've been looking forward to bullet train because uh, Kotaro Isaka's book of that name, from which it is adapted, is a straight-up banger, a delightful twisted page-turner. One of its major characters is a ruthless assassin who obsessively and knowledgeably quotes Thomas the Take Engine, for goodness sake. That's wonderfully warped. Where was this... Where was this criticism... With the Netflix Cowboy Bebop, by the way, with Faye. Why weren't they mad when Faye was in Japanese? Why weren't they mad when Jet Black was changed? Maybe the problem is because it's Brad Pitt as the main character and what he looks like. It doesn't matter as long as it's somebody else that replaces that character. But if they look like Brad Pitt... That's a problem. It's just, uh, it's just stupid. I don't see anything to get bent out of shape here, especially since the creator and the writer is cool with it. And I guarantee you, nobody in Japan cares. Nobody in Japan will give a shit. The only people that are going to complain are Hollywood critics and Westerners on Twitter. That's it. So, I hope this movie's good. It'd be great to have a good, fun, entertaining movie. We don't get very many of them from Hollywood. And I'm a fan of good, fun movies like Top Gun making a lot of money because it means that we'll get more of them. And I'd rather have good entertainment than ESG-approved entertainment. Anyway, that's it. 
Let me know what you guys think. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube. They'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, make sure to follow me over on Twitch. I do watch parties, play video games over there. They're always fun. Follow me over there and come hang out. Also, make sure you subscribe to Yellow Flash, my other channel. There's a link to that in the description as well. I do a lot of live streams over there that I don't do on this channel. Usually smaller and a little bit more personal. So make sure you follow me over there and sign up.